What's up guys, it's Brad from Let Architect here. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a quick tip on how you can adjust and use missed passes inside of Blender when you create your virtual CG environments. This should be a fairly quick tutorial. I'll just be going through how you can adjust and export a missed pass for compositing so that you can add some atmospheric fall off to your city or environment scenes. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. This is going to be our scene setup that we go through today and add a missed pass to for compositing. And essentially what we have here is we have our camera here looking through some uh, City Builder 3D assets on a particle plane. I used a few smaller buildings from the Derelict Future pack and then I used a few buildings from the Sci-Fi Future assets as well and then I added them to a collection and then distributed them across a particle plane here. If you want to know a tutorial on how you can do that pretty easily I'll put a tutorial on that in the description below so be sure to check that out. Uh, but yeah pretty much I have this particle system here with some city assets on it and then here in the background I've just more specifically placed a few of the taller building assets from City Builder 3D just to kind of add a little bit more depth in our scene here. Pretty basic setup here. I've added a sun lamp with a strength of six here, warmed it up a little bit so it's just backlighting our entire city according to our camera and then under the world tab here I've just added a basic sky texture for some ambient lighting as well and if we go to view and viewpoint camera this is going to be the frame for the camera that we will be rendering with and playing around with using our mist pass to composite the city shot more effectively. And I've just done a quick render here without any compositing or mist pass addition. And it's looking pretty cool here. As you can see, we have a nice little uh, backlight from our sun, which is kind of edging our environment pretty well. And, uh, you know, just the city assets here in the foreground distributed on that particle system. So pretty standard render that you would get without adding any compositing and uh, just adjusting your environment and lighting. And and uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to first enable the mist pass and then we're going to adjust its parameters to make sure it's giving us enough detail to composite this render with that mist effectively. And then we'll also add just a basic sky background to our scene as well. So I'll go ahead and close this here. And the first thing we're going to do to enable our mist pass is we'll just go to the layer properties tab here. And all we need to do to enable that mist pass is under passes here. You just go ahead and check the mist checkbox here. And now your mist pass is going to be enabled for output or compositing inside of your compositor. Technically speaking, if we go to our compositing tab here, as you can see, we have our mist pass that we can use to composite our layers together. But before we do another render of this and try to composite it, we want to adjust that mist pass to make sure we're getting the most out of it. So I'm just going to go back to layout mode here and uh, we're going to go ahead and go to rendered view here. And as you can see, we have our city setup being rendered here in cycles. And as you can see here, it's rendering out our combined pass here inside of our viewport window. But what we want to do to adjust that mist pass and something that I've learned recently is we want to go here to the shading option here. And then under viewport shading, we'll just change the render pass from combined to mist. And now as you can see here, we can see what our mist pass output would be given its current settings. And uh, this would probably work pretty good for adding some mist to our deep background, but the problem with the way our mist pass is looking right now is it's not adding any mist to our buildings really close to the camera. And that can work a lot of the time, but what we want to do is we want to get a little bit more detail in our mist pass up close to the camera so that we have the possibility to add mist here if we want to. So to adjust the mist pass, we'll just go to the World Properties tab here. And now as you can see, we have a little panel here called Mist Pass. And if you go ahead and open it, you can see the start of the mist and the depth of the mist. So what we can do here is we can adjust this first parameter to get the mist closer to the camera. So if I go ahead and bring the start value down to something like one, now as you can see we're getting a lot more detail within the buildings in the foreground and we can composite with the mist a little bit more effectively. And uh, if we bring this all the way down to zero we can see it even more. Now as you can see the mist is coming all the way close to the camera and you can use all of that detail or even crush it back down back to black if you don't want any mist there at all but you're getting all the detail to work with in your compositing process and uh, as you can see here we're losing a little bit of the buildings in the background I might bring this starting point back to one and then I'll go ahead and adjust the depth setting as well we want to make sure that we're getting all the buildings in our scene I might bring this to something like 28. And now as you can see here, we're having a nice gradient from the background all the way to the foreground, and we can control where the mist is added to different areas more effectively. All right, so let's go ahead and I'll go back to the combined pass here, and then we'll just go ahead and get out of rendered mode. 
and uh, now I'm going to go ahead and render out an image and uh, show a quick way to composite with that mist pass inside of the Blender compositor. So I'll go ahead and we'll just go ahead and first save our project here just one more time. And now we'll just go to render and render image and then give Blender some time to render out your image. And for this tutorial, I'm just rendering out at 32 samples at 1080p resolution. But of course, feel free to change your rendering settings there as well, depending on the result for the final output that you're going for. All right, so it took a minute to render out our frame here, but now let's go ahead and I'll show you how to composite this image with some mist pass and add a background to the scene here. So our render is looking pretty cool here. And one of the nice things about this panel is we can also switch from composite to view layer here, and then we can actually change which pass we are viewing here. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to mist pass here. And as you can see here, this is our mist pass overlaid on top of an alpha channel. It might look like there's not a lot of detail here in the foreground, but that's just because we're on an alpha channel here and it's a little bit hard to see all the detail is there in the compositor though so I'll go ahead and close this here and then we'll go ahead and open up the compositing tab and if you don't have the use nodes checkbox be sure to open that up and then we've added a viewer node here as well as our composite for the output and as you can see here we have our mist pass output here so let's go ahead and add a mix node to composite it with the beauty pass so we'll go ahead and connect this mix node here on our image and then we'll connect our mist pass on the other end input node for it. And now as you can see here, when we change the factor of this mix node, we can control how much mist is coming into our shot. And another cool thing we can do here when we're using our mist pass is we can change the color of the mist itself. So let's go ahead and press shift A and we'll add a color balance node here and just put that right before our mist pass goes into the mix node. And now we can kind of adjust the color that our mist is going to add to the scene. And you can kind of play around with it, see what kind of results you can get here. But before we adjust this entirely, let's go ahead and add a sky background to our composite as well. So I'll go ahead and press Shift A and add an alpha over node. And we'll just go ahead and open up our viewer here, add this alpha over node right before our viewer output. And then we'll again press Shift A, add an input for an image and connect this to our alpha over node. And then I'll just open up a sky texture that I have downloaded here, just called sky. Now, as you can see, we have a sky in the background, but the scale is a little bit off. So I'll go ahead and press shift A again, add a distort node and then a scale node. And then we'll change its setting here to render size. And now, as you can see, we have a nice sky background in our scene here. And if you want to export your composite with the mist pass directly from Blender, you can go ahead and disconnect the image composite node here and just connect it where the viewer node is. So then it's not just your beauty pass being exported in the composite, but all the compositing steps that you went through as well. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You can just kind of adjust the amount of mist you want to add to your scene. You can make it, you know, really dense and then change the color, give it some kind of stylistic look. And uh, if you want, you can also add a RGB be curves node here to kind of crunch the mist pass a little bit so it's not quite as detailed and you're getting more amounts of mist in the background versus the foreground I uh, personally I like to play around with the details so I'm gonna leave the RGB curves off but it's just another layer of data that you can play around with I think I'll probably leave it something like this probably put the factor at 0.5 and I'll just play around with the nodes here that's kind of a cool shot the mist kind of lifts the shadows a little bit which is kind of cool and uh, yeah, that's the final output. That's how you can composite with a mist pass pretty effectively inside of Blender. You can also use the mist pass and Z pass as well to add different atmospheric elements to your scene more effectively. I might do a tutorial on that in the future as well, but this is just kind of a systematic way that you can add some atmospheric fall off to your scene. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what kind of video tutorials you'd like to see next, and I'll see you next time.